Hello everybody, Mr. B here. Welcome back if you're returning and if you're new to the channel, welcome aboard, click subscribe. So, true story. I went to the store today and uh, shopping for something completely different, which is, you know, is always how this goes, right? But I found this on sale. Oh, ho, ho. So we're going to do a slow cooker pot roast. Let's get started. So slow cookers are, are great and they're a wonderful way for you to have a Sunday style supper during the week because you can put it on as you're walking out the door and it's ready when you walk back in the door from a hard day of busy whatever it is that you do during the course of the day. But it does take a little wee 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 just a little little, little bit of prep. So the trick that I've got here especially with the pot roast is you can do the prep um, that I'll show you here in a minute the night before and go ahead and put it in to the crock put that in the refrigerator when you get up in the morning get your first cup of coffee pull it out of the refrigerator let it start to sort of get the chill off of it while you do your thing running around fighting with the kids trying to get them to the school bus and the horror that is mornings um, then right as you're walking out the door dump it into the crock pot and you're gonna be ready to go. Don't forget to turn it on. Yes, that has happened. Of course it has happened. When you come home, it's, it's ready to eat. Now, I, of course, am going to make gravy once it's done, but that's another process for later. And uh, anyway, let me show you what you're going to need for slow cooker pot roast. For the crock pot pot roast, I'm going to have to use, uh, call it slow cooker. I'm not going to be able to say that. Um, I've got a, uh, a um, chuck roast here. Like I said, it was on manager special. What does that mean? That means it's, you know, it, it's time to go. It's time to move it, get it off the shelf, which means when you get it home, you need to freeze it or cook it pretty much same day. All right. Um, because you're not quite sure what the quality is. This is beautiful. Great marbleization, which is what you're going to want to look for when you are getting a beef roast, okay? To that, we are going to do rough chopped onion, some smashed garlic. I had some carrots on hand that I knew because, like I said, this was impromptu. I did not go to the store to do pot roast. Um, these are about to the point where it's kind of use or lose them, so they'll be perfect here. Mushrooms. Um, Again, they're getting to the point where it's kind of use or lose them. So that's going to be perfect here. People, if you don't like shrooms, I don't understand you at all, but whatever, leave them out. Um, I typically will also use um, celery in the veg mix, um, just the little, you know, stalks kind of like that. Um, I'm a mashed potato guy when it comes to pot roast, so I usually do that kind of on the side. Um, but you can get the, uh, the, the little red potatoes or fingerlings and if you're going to do that if you're going to put the potatoes in the slow cooker with everything else put them in the bottom okay so that it gives the meat a uh, kind of something to sort of sit on i'm going to do that with the carrots and onions here um or about half of each and then put the rest on top enough of that so i always use one packet of the lipton recipe secrets um, soup and dip mix. That's kind of my dry seasoning, you know. Um, this is kind of a take on my mom's recipe. She always used golden mushroom soup. Um, makes an incredible gravy, guys. So I got two, excuse me, two cans of that. Not sure how much I'm going to need, but I wanted to be safe than sorry. And a can of beef broth. Um, I've also done red wine, but the red wine that I've got on hand is basically vinegar at this point, not a wine drinker. So, um, so yeah, that's not going to be a, that's not going to work. Um, so yeah, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to sear the roast off in a little bit of olive oil and some butter. So we're going to get that started. Um, side note, remember to spray your crock before start, you start putting things in. You'll thank me for that tip later. So let's get this meat searing. Mm-hmm. 
is so pretty. I'm gonna try to give this a flip now, carefully. I mean, this is a, I forget what the poundage is. See that? See that? That is 100% flavor right there. It's helping seal in all that fat that's on the inside. Uh, it's gonna make this absolutely delicious. Now look, some people will actually sear all sides, even like around in here. I'm not going to be that technical with it because, you know, I do want some flavor coming out of the thing. Um, but I guess if there's a proper way to do it, that would be the way to do it. I'm going to get some more color on this. As I said, I put a little bit of our friends, the onions and carrots in there. And um, we will uh, come back when we're in the crock pot ready to add the uh, soup. Okay, beautiful color going here. Um, I am going to add my veg, get all the great shroomies on in here. I'm sorry, I don't mind the shrooms. You could, you know, this is a lot. You could definitely go with less. Put some carrots on it. And, uh, you know, this kind of thing. Don't forget that garlic. This garlic is going to just cook all the way down into that. Yum. Now, since slow cooking is basically a slow braise, right, it's going to need some liquid. Now, before I do that, this is the soup mix. Mm -hmm. And we will do... One can of shroom. And the second one, same thing. Everything kind of marry together. A little bit of that going in there. Use almost the whole can, and um, that'll serve as its cooking liquid, right? So, so there you have it, guys. This has taken me about maybe 20 minutes, including cutting the onion, to get this to this point. This is an easy night before prep. Put it on in the morning and go. So when we come back. We will be uh, probably carving this pot roast up, okay? So we'll see you then. Rebby, Boaz, I swear to God, if y'all ain't gonna settle it down, Boaz, if you're gonna vomit, I swear, I swear, do it on the floor. Do it on the floor. You're gonna do it on the rug, ain't you? Jeez Louise. Ay. Listen, I never said that I was nice in the mornings or anything like that. But it's the crack of ass in the morning. And we're going to get this damn pot roast up. But, as I mentioned earlier, just pulling this out of the refrigerator, I'm going to let this kind of come on up to temperature, put it in cold. You can put it in cold. Hell, I don't care what you do at this point in my damn life. Okay? I don't care. I don't care. Mm. But it will kind of help the temperature and the, you know, it kind of get along and marry if it just sort of comes up a little bit. You know, 
not to be brutal. So, let it, you know, I'm going to hit the shower and do my thing, even though I'm going to look just like this when I come back and put this on, because that's video and that's the way this damn works, and I'm not doing a costume change for a pot roast. Okay, people? I'm just not doing it. But we're going to get this on, and it's going to be delicious, and you're going to be so glad you did it. So, to recap, you did the prep, you did the sear off the night before, day before, you went ahead and put it in the crock, you pull it out of the refrigerator the day of, you're going to put it in, put it on, walk away, be done. It's that simple. It's amazing. And you'd be so glad you did at the end of the day. So, I've got a cat barfing in the laundry room that I have to get to because apparently that, my morning doesn't go without a cat barf. Apparently. So, let me hit that. Hmm. Ms. Ruby, did you barf? You look like you might have barfed. I am trying to make pot roast, and there's all this barfing going on this morning. Thank you so very much. Thank you so much. All right, kids. You know, my mornings are always so stress-free, right? Oh. Anyway, crock has come up a little bit. I'm going to put it in the cooker. And we're going to lock it down, as you do. And you're just going to turn it on. We're going to put this on. Uh, well, I guess I need to plug it in. Look, I've only had one cup of coffee. Sue me. Anywho, put that in. B. There we go. Right? And it's going to go. Now, my crock pot does have a warm setting. So once it gets through the time, the allocated time, it's just going to go to a warm setting. So you're running late for that meeting? Fine. It's okay. Kid soccer practice that you forgot about? No worries. It's going to be okay. It will be okay. You're slow cooking. It's going to be delicious. And it will get there eventually. But to be quite honest with you, I think I might go back to bed for 30 minutes or so, so we'll see you later. Okay. Okay. It's going to be fine. So, let's see. Hopefully I won't make too much of a mess of this, but... Look how beautiful that is. All right, I'm going to set this up here. And I'm going to tent this for just a little bit because it's going to be a minute before the gravy's ready. Now remember, you didn't have to come home and cook, so you might have some time to do some gravy. If not, you know, your call. Um, the, the jus, as it is right now, because it is not gravy, is um, pretty delicious in itself, right? So carefully drain off all this veg. So you can see how beautiful that is. And then take a look at that beautiful veg. And the gravy! It's gonna be so good. Here is a pro tip, guys. So I have pulled off some of the, um, of the pan drippings, for lack of a better word. And uh, because I don't need all of it to make the gravy, or, you know, I'd be swimming in gravy, which is a pleasurable thought now that I'm thinking about it. Um, but I pulled some off. I'm going to freeze this. The next time I go to make a vegetable soup or a beef stew or anything of that nature, I can pull this out and that can be part of the broth of that soup or stew. So use this. There's a lot of flavor in here, guys. 
Okay, so we're going to start thickening the gravy. Now I've started with about a half a stick of butter. You want to use equal parts butter and flour. We're going to make a roux. There's a couple of ways that you can do this without having to make a roux. You could use the slurry method whereby you mix up some cornstarch and flour and a little bit of water. Sometimes that can get it to the consistency. Um, so it just depends on what your time allows, right? But this shouldn't take that much time. So the butter's foaming. I'm going to sprinkle in a little bit of flour to start. Work that through. You try to get most of the lumps out, but to be honest with you, they, I find they tend to sort of take care of themselves. I don't know if that's just the luck of the, you know, luck of the cook or luck of the pot or whatever, but you want to get that flour flavor to kind of cook out, but you do not want to burn this, so this is not something you're going to walk away from. I think that's good. Now I'm going to slowly start adding in my pan drippings. Using a non-stick pan for this is also a great idea. I think we've got some room here. Okay guys, we are here. I'm going to give it just a pinch of salt. It really didn't need too much, but it'll help kind of marry everything together. Pretty liberal on the pepper. And now this is the consistency that you kind of want for a good roast beef gravy. And if you'll see, if I can get this, it'll nap. See that? That's called napping. That's exactly when you know your gravy is ready. All right. We are going to get this plated up and have a taste. Okay. So isn't that just, I mean, hello. You could take a couple of forts here. You don't even have to carve it, right? You want to talk about a sandwich? <laughs> and a um, couple of points here I wanted to make. You know, if you somehow have leftover gravy, remember when I was talking about pulling the pan drippings off and uh, using that for soups? Do the same thing with the gravy. If you have leftover roast beef somehow, you can do the same thing with that. Look how tender this is. You can do the same thing with the leftover meat. It makes a, it's a, this is a great starter um, for a beef stew. And, you know, given the price of these roasts, which I was just thrilled to find this on the special that I was talking about earlier in the video. Um, you know, if you can get two meals out of it, if you've got any left, by all means, hit that, right? So, there you have it. Guys, this is a Sunday pot roast, crock pot. Do it in the middle of the week. Meal like you have never seen. Let me get a taste of this. I'm going to get a little bit of this. Some gravy. Mm. Oh, yeah. Bold, beefy, hearty, oniony. It's delicious. It's absolutely delicious. Yay! All right, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed that and try it. Let me know what you think by leaving a comment. So we're going to leave it here. I've got my supper. I'm going to get to some Netflix. So we're going to see you next time. See you later.